There's something heartbreaking about this gospel today, that Jesus, he's unpacking his heart. He's sharing with his friends what's about to happen. They're going up to Jerusalem. He shares with them that he's going to be handed over, scourged, crucified, put to death. And it's as if it falls completely on deaf ears. It's as if like they're incapable of hearing him on this. As if this is maybe just another one of those mysterious things that he's saying, like he said along the way, it just goes kind of in one ear, out the other. I don't really get what he's saying. Just keep moving on. Like he's talking about his death and all that they can think about at this point is they're thinking about power and position. They're thinking about the conquering Jesus coming into Jerusalem and they're picking out the fabric for their thrones. That's where their minds are at. It's like they can't even hear him. But to be fair, as I sat with this, as I prayed with this, to be fair, they're, they're operating out of the only category that they have, which is the way that the world operates, right? That's how they're seeing things. The categories of power and force. If you want something, you take it by force. This is how they're thinking because they can't help themselves in this way because Jesus has not yet introduced a new way of being for them. The old way of being. You want power? You have to take it by force. You want to affect change? You have to get in there. You've got to do something about it. They're thinking about authority. They're thinking about being bosses. Like they probably just heard Jesus saying, we're going up to Jerusalem, and then they didn't hear anything else after that. Their minds filled in the blanks with the expectations that they thought what that would look like. So Jesus here, he's introducing an entirely new way that they cannot comprehend. He's showing them how he fights. That's what he's talking about. He's showing them how he fights. He's showing them how he's going to bring about victory, how he's going to bring about transformation. And right here at this point on the road, going up to Jerusalem, they just don't get it. But they will. They will get it soon. Fast forward to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus has just gone by himself to a distance to pray. And these same brothers, James and John, they were invited a little way out of, out of the, the, the group of the twelve along with Peter to pray at a distance with Jesus. They fall asleep. And in the midst of their slumber, soldiers come into the garden carrying what? Clubs and torches and weapons to seize him, right? The battle is beginning here. It's about to ensue and they're armed with the weapons of this world. They've come to fight like the world fights, with clubs and swords and torches and chains and ropes and all of that, by displays of power, displays of force and authority and violence, just like he said would happen. The Son of Man will be handed over. Mind you, this is the same Son of Man who has authority over every molecule, every atom of being. He will let himself be handed over, apprehended. So how does Peter respond? What does Peter do? Peter takes out his sword to strike the high priest's servant. Why does he do this? Because this is how we fight. This is how the world responds. This is how we fight. This is how you defend yourself in a dog-eat-dog, zero-sum world. This is the only way, right? Peter's saying, you're not going to take him away. You're not going to do this. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure of that. And just like James and John jockeying for power here on the road, jockeying for position and authority. Like, this is how we do things. you got to position yourself properly. Get close to the ruler, right? You, you get yourself in a position of favor, influence, power. They think power is ruling and commanding, right? They're thinking like the world. It's the only way they know how to think, just like Peter. So what does Jesus say to them, to James and John along this road? We just heard in the gospel. He tells them, you do not know what you're asking. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. In other words, they exert their power, like what's happening in the garden. But it shall not be so among you. They don't even know what that means. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. And then pointing to himself, just so the Son of Man did not come 
to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. What does Jesus say to Peter? Put away your sword. Put away your sword. Like when Jesus tells Peter, put away your sword, he's, it's like he's, he's doing the practicum of what he said on the road up to Jerusalem. I'm going to show you what this means. I'm going to show you what this looks like. I'm going to show you what greatness looks like. I'm going to show you what, what it means to be great in the kingdom. I'm going to show you what fighting looks like in the kingdom. I'm going to show you what battle looks like in the kingdom. But you've got to put away your sword. It doesn't look like what you think it looks like. This is a different kind of battle. And he's saying if you, if you try and fight it on the terms of the world, you're going to lose. This is a battle of an entirely different kind. And Jesus is saying, watch. Watch what I'm going to do. Watch how I win this. Watch. There's, there's no other real option available to us as Christians, as Jesus' disciples, than this way. The way of Jesus, the way of the cross, where things are upside down, where victory looks like defeat, where conquering looks like being conquered, where the greatest weapon looks like a sheathed sword, like the greatest is the least, the master is the slave. This is the only way, the, the upside down way of Jesus is the only way. And this is going to be our way as the church. This is the way of the church. The church, right, Jesus' body, Jesus' bride will go the way of her head, the way of the Lord and bridegroom. The church will be condemned. Like look around in our culture, the church will be mocked, scourged spit upon, and yes, it's somehow, some way, the church will be crucified. And when things seem the absolute darkest, when hope is utterly lost and spent, give it three days. Because that's the most important thing that Jesus says in this gospel. After all of that horrible stuff that happens to him, he will be raised on the third day. Like, this is how he fought. This is how he won. This is how we must fight. That's how we will win through a rout that looks like total defeat. It's the way of Jesus. It's the way of the cross. So, Lord, give us the grace to believe this. <laughs> Amen. Let us offer petition.